Hello my soccer universe, Nations League group stage, main phase is in the books. Yes, we still have the uh, final four and the playdowns to play, but more or less everything else is decided. Uh, yeah, and I watched yesterday the goal zone, wearing Italy, Italy, yay, qualified and will now host the final four, uh, as, we, as we will see as well. So, uh, to be played in San Siro and the Juventus Stadium, I think that's pretty exciting. Those are great venues, to be honest. I would assume that San Siro is the one that will take uh, center stage, I hope, because the Juventus Stadium is not as great as the San Siro. And yeah, I realized with this, I've shown you a video, a dedicated video to the green Italy jersey that I got for my birthday. This one I may have to do, but I want to see if I have shown you all my other national team jerseys. I don't think necessarily so. So let's see how this will go and then I probably will give you one of those videos as well. Okay, before we start with uh, yesterday's games where I said I watched the goal zone so I feel semi-prepared for everything I saw for five games the highlights. Uh, the big news is that Romania was awarded a 3-0 victory over Norway. With that result, uh, Norway still could qualify uh, and uh, over, with a win over Austria. The, uh, or and uh, Northern Ireland was really relegated, so maybe there will be some protests coming in. Uh, has to be seen where this will go. Still no decision yet over Switzerland, Ukraine. I would assume it will be awarded to Switzerland, which actually will relegate the Ukraine. <sighs> interesting stuff. In interesting stuff for sure. So let's look, uh, go to yesterday's games, Bosnia against Italy. Um, yeah, I'm wearing Italy. Italy won rather easily this one and again maybe a little bit more goal scoring and Italy would actually be among the, uh, definitely among the fav favorites for Euro 2020 which is another video that I am I'm planning to do before we get Oh, I have yeah the, I have three video, video, videos planned uh, ahead of the weekend but let's see. Uh, how much time I will have for that since it's already Thursday. Well, uh, as I said, Italy did quite well. Uh, got the uh, lead through uh, and uh, Belotti, Insigne assist was actually quite, uh, well, not quite easy, I think, for Belotti to take it, but Insigne really played the pass very, very nicely. And then the Sassuolo combination, Locatelli and Pierardi makes it 2-0 for Italy. Italy fully in control and I think Italy is one of the more fun teams to watch at, at the moment. The only other thought that I had is uh, since they were playing in all white with this one and Insigne is all blonded up top, that looked weird when you saw it from a distance. Uh, the other game then was more or less meaningless because with that win Italy had secured the first spot. Uh, but Poland and Netherlands may be play playing for Pride. Um, it was a weird game where Poland actually took the lead through Josviak, a really nice play. I think uh, Lev Davidovsky plays through and then he runs uh, puts it from left, right, right foot and via the inner post it goes in. The Netherlands have done a few really good chances uh, through uh, Marlon, I think Stengs, also uh, Memphis to equalize but never got, got, got there and then uh, Poland even could have uh, taken a 2-0 lead. In the second half it was quite clear what the Poles wanted to do. Yeah, let's play this home. Stay deep and yeah, that in the, in the end beat them because a penalty uh, that they pipe then converts with a very, very short run up and then late uh, Gini Vinaldo, although it might have been a Piontek on goal, it, uh, it was not uh, conclusive from, from the pictures turned the game around at the Dutch. Playing for the first time in the new black jersey, which I overall like, but I probably will not get because I have a black Dutch jersey, so I don't see much reason for uh, getting this one, although I do like it. But I want to have a white one white with orange probably i actually would like to have the 2015 away or one of those really from the 90s yeah so uh the dutch win that that one securing a second space uh, uh in, in the group a1 in the other group uh, the final between belgium and denmark very quickly went belgium's way with tielemans again uh, scoring the opener this time not as deflected uh, but Denmark fought themselves back in the game and uh, you know it, it was an attack over Eriksen who sends Breathwaite. It goes then I think with a little deflection or whatever to Windhoot and uh, puts it in, in, into the net and uh, the game was kind of teetering a little bit on the edge. But after the half Lukaku with two goals uh, sets it Belgium's way. Then a very very nasty on goal by Chadli where um, Courtois just 
steps over the ball and goes into the net and then the Bruyne says, no, this, can, this cannot be and just a minute later, really nicely taken. I mean, you, you, you could see how he's adjusting his foot and pull it high up for to Belgium. Quite easy win in the end because there's a lot of quad 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 in the squad but you always wonder uh could they be better and you see already belgium is the top favorite now to win the entire nations league but um, let's see uh if that will hold up uh, i didn't see anything of england against iceland 4-0 win uh 2-0 at the half through declan rice and mason mount then uh um, i the, an icelander is sent off and uh, phil Foden scores two more easy for nil win uh let's yeah let's see it, uh, with that the uh, group a standings as i said italy qualified um and, and, uh, ahead, ahead of the netherlands and poland in, in the end you know poland had now two losses against the two big boys and in the end i think italy's re record they and it's very much how the nations league went in, in general it started slow and then it got better and better and better and better and in, in the end italy had a very convincing campaign with three wins and three draws a uh, good performance in the netherlands as well and now uh doing uh, what was required also uh since since i'm looking at it now uh, look at how the goal average thanks to spain already got up and but also the 4-2 um, of belgium helped a lot uh so that the goal average in league a at least is where we would expect it to be for soccer it's you is you usually around a 2.7 uh in that area hence the yellow on the back uh the other group belgium of course uh threw also rather convincingly with only one loss which was kind of a shocker because they really had england in in, in the bag and England turned that, that one around. A little bit disappointing for England, I must say, especially since they lost the head-to-head -to, -head, uh, to Denmark. Um, I would have expected England to play a better, better role. Denmark is the one promoted team that really did well uh, in League A. Because Sweden was promoted, yeah, they were battling out with Croatia, but, you know, France and Portugal were the class of that, that group, both playing uh, impeccably, and France probably just a tad better. And in the other group, yes, uh, Ukraine still could manage to stay in there, but you also see they have uh, two wins, one of them against Spain, so Ukraine did not do that bad overall, but now if Switzerland gets a 3-0 win, they go down as well. So, which already tell, tells me, yes, uh, this promotion now was, you know, from groups of three and so on. Uh, uh, to extending it to grow grow groups for but but you can really see the teams that played in league b last time, time around they actually kind of belong there iceland was kind of the abnormality because they had really well but uh they had peaked and you know with such a small cunt, cunt country you they will have to go through a valley now um so yeah um i'm curious to see what will happen with the next um uh, set of promoted teams which leads us now to the game, uh, an absolute disgrace for Austria. You play a C team against Norway. You put, I think, seven defensive players uh, onto the pitch and you play uh, as nothing. I mean, this makeshift Nor Norway team came out flying, could probably have had a 1-0. Then Austria claws itself a little bit back, but not being convincing at all. And then in the 61st, they make the 1-0. I mean, congratulations, Norway. But how this Austrian team is mismanaged. I mean, uh, jo joking, I have to say, Austria and Germany probably should exchange coaches because the Germans need someone who thinks defensively and settles them on the back a little bit, whereas the Austrians would need someone a little bit more forward thinking because we have a great a great team but we have someone who cannot yield this power and it just drives me nuts i i literally cannot watch austria and the best thing was in the 75th minute of everything that was ha happening on the goal zone on the zone they said well this is the only game where there's something really still to play for where there's where some, some excitement but it's really 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 tough watch we only saw them once again and this was in stoppage time when Austria scored the equal to Grubic, uh, who probably should have started, who has been scoring goals quite freely. Yes, he plays only lo lowly Lorient, but uh, uh, give me a break. Um, and then, I mean, the exchange in the 80th minute where uh, you pay, you take out a defensive midfielder for a defender, although it's the last captain, 
tells everything because Austria could uh, afford losing 1-0. They could not afford losing 2-0 or 2-1. So absolute crazy stuff. I'm so mad. Uh, yes, League A, but we qualified for League A, but I'm I'm really mad. Uh, it's just a disgrace how this is. And, and you know, all the... Um, People in power are kind of covering up on it, which uh, annoys me even more. Northern Ireland, Romania 1-1, we don't need to say much about that. That one, the Czechs beat the Slovaks 2-0, Suchek and Andrasek. As I said, it's pretty consistent that the Czechs beat the Slovaks. Uh, but that also meant that Scotland was under, under pressure and probably they've been partying too hard because Solomon gets Israel the 1-0 and this was also important as you see because Israel stays up at the... Um, uh, and Slovakia goes down uh, at the expense of Slovakia, I wanted to say. Then uh, Group B3 was the big one where um, the first game Hungary won 2-0 against Turkey but the big story is that uh, Serbia absolutely demolished Russia. Uh, it was 4-0 at the half. Radonjic in the 10th, Jovic in the 25th, 41st, Vlahovic in uh, stoppage time of first half. Jovic make it 4-0. I think all the frustrations of Serbia poured onto Russia. And then the pile him off on late to, to, uh, to make in the 64th to make it 5-0. Which meant Turkey could not afford to lose, which is exactly what they did. Um, the game was... Uh, open for, for, for a long time, but then Sieger uh, gave, uh, gives uh, ha Hungary the lead in the 57th and late Varga makes it 2-0 when, uh, when Turkey was really pouring everything forward. And so a very, very even group uh, ends with Turkey being relegated, uh, which is also kind of remarkable because I did not necessarily see that coming. Um, then. Ireland, Bulgaria, nil-nil, don't need to talk about I mean, those are two teams that really have trouble at the moment. Wales beats Finland 3-1, uh, definitely helped because Finland had someone sent off in the 12th minute for holding. Then uh, Wilson uh, makes one nil, James, James makes one, Puki pulls one back and Moore uh, lay, lay down 3-1 for Wales. So if you look, look now at the League B standings, um, Austria... Great, the greatest qualifiers ever. The Czechs really, and I actually have to say the Czechs deserve from, you know, they had so much COVID trouble. I think otherwise the Czechs would have had no trouble with this group whatsoever. Uh, so I think there's, it's done right here that the Czechs uh, go up. Uh, sorry, Scotland, to say, I, but I, I really think the Czechs deserved, they, they have overall the better team. My, uh, but then they will play at Euro... Uh, at at years against against Russia to prove me wrong. So let's see about that with Scotland having home field advantage. Uh, as I said, Hungary, that was one team that played League C the last time around. Uh, it's also a little bit muddy now, you know, with uh, because they're basically you 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 can say two League C contenders in there, whatever. Uh, but Hungary goes up, Serbia stays in, and Turkey now goes down. Uh, this was a really crazy group. Uh, Wales and Finland were the class of their groups with Wales ahead above Finland. And Ireland and Bulgaria are really, 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 really bad looking. Uh, and then in League C, we had a big win for Albania, 3-2 over Be Belarus. And I said it in the pre preview that uh, it was Armenia. No, it was Albania against Kazakhstan who scored uh, from the kickoff. Please watch that one. Uh, it is absolutely crazy. It is absolutely crazy. Um, Armenia pulls the upset over North Macedonia, winning 1-0 uh, Georgia. I think with their loss to North Macedonia in the Euro playoffs, it's all out. All the air went out. It's completely deflating. And as we'll see, Armenia now pulled the opposite and is promoted from from the group. A group that before that we said is between North Macedonia and Georgia. Greece, rather disappointing, only nil-nil against Slovenia, Kosovo beats Moldavia. So um, we have here now Montenegro uh, is promoted, we, we already said. Armenia, as I said, pulled the upset. They were a League D team. <laughs> so yeah, most of them were League D here. Slovenia gets promoted over Greece. Uh, slight upset, although those two are kind of evenly matched at the moment. I still think Greece should be in League B. B from the talent that they have, and Albania over Belarus is also promoted. 
And now for the playdowns, um, they take, of course, the ranking and we have the best ranked last place team, uh, which is Kazakhstan, plays the worst one, which is Moldova in a home, home, home away and Estonia then for, therefore plays Cyprus, which I find a little bit funny because if you look at the ratings, I have Cyprus and Estonia both ranked above Moldova and Kazakhstan. But yeah, that will be the play down. Uh, you can already see who I will, who I favor. I think Cy Cyprus Estonia is rather even a uh, probably slight advantage to Cyprus. And now for the final four to be played in Italy. Italy is ac actually fourth on that list. Um, however, you know, home field advantage, it has to be seen if the uh, spec spec is allowed, the home field advantage goal goes up, that might actually boost Italy's changes, chances. It's rather even with Belgium having 28%, uh, just be ahead of France to win it, and then Spain just ahead of Italy. So it's really, it will also a lot depend on the draws. This is still the random draw, so we have to see. I also find it interesting, we have two red teams and two blue teams in there, which means we will see at least two matchups where we have an alternate jersey in there as well, which is always interesting. Although in this case, they're all white. Or oh, is Spain? I don't know what's what. I mean, they, they played um, in their old jersey uh, the other day. So yeah, we have to see. Anyway, that was the Nations League so, so far. Let me know what you thought about the games yes, yesterday. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel because it will keep you updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.